Hello, my name is Abby, and I'm going to be walking you through Lab Module 8 of the Yeast Orphan Gene Project. So in this module, we will be looking for other gene mutation strains that demonstrate the same phenotype as your mutated strain. These data could help us predict the function of your gene, as it may be similar to a pathway that these other genes are involved in. We will explore your gene in the context of other genes, starting by searching for genetic interactions, then examining physical protein intera interactors, and finally studying gene expression in response to various stimuli. Let's get started. All right, so we're going to get started with Module 8, opening the worksheet and opening the guide. And the first program that we are going to be working with is called Gene Mania. Um, so we're going to open that up. And Gene Mania finds other genes related to a set of input genes using a large set of uh, functional association data. So the protein and genetic interactions, the pathways, the co-localizations, and the protein domain similarity. So I'm going to start by putting my gene name in the top search bar corner. And I'm going to be using TMN2 today. All right, so this is what it looks like when it loads. So we're going to start with the co-expression network graphic. So you're going to make sure that the only thing selected is co-expression and take a screenshot of that. So the co-expression gene expression data is two genes are linked if their expression levels are similar across conditions in a gene study, gene expression study. Um, so I'm going to be pasting that network graphic in and then now we're going to start with co-expression relevant genes and their functions. So you're just going to click on the genes that come up and it'll state the gene in the description up there. So you can't copy and paste the description um, from here, but what I didn't realize is you could search the gene in the SGD and copy the description from there. Um, EMP70 is a protein with a role in cellular adhesion, filamentous growth, and endosome to vacuole sorting. similar to TMN2P. So they're members of the transmembrane 9 family of protein, proteins with nine transmembrane segments. So you're going to want to go through and do this for all of the genes pop up and clicking on different ones and seeing um, what their different function says and you would go through and do it next for um, TUL1 would be another one that I would do it for. Of course I'm not going to go through and type it out for all of these. Um, it would take a lot of time and when you click on the graphic you can see which ones are specifically interacting with TUL1 what overlap there is with the genes. And now onto the physical interaction network graphic. So you want to make sure physical interactions is checked and it can be kind of difficult to zoom in and out with this program. All right, and taking a screenshot of that. So for the physical interactions, protein-protein interaction data, two, our two gene products are linked if they were found to interact in a protein-protein interaction studies. Um, and these data are collected from primary studies found in protein interaction databases. So now onto the genetic interactions. And the genetic interactions are based off of two genes are functionally associated. If the effects of perturbing one gene were found to be modified by perturbations to a second gene, and these data are collected from primarily studies and biogrid. And so with most of these, again, I do move the genes so it, you can clearly see the interactions because you can move them around. And again, you would copy down the gene interaction relevant genes and their functions, but it would take me all day to do that um, for the sake of this video. 
now we're doing shared um we're doing shared protein domains which are two gene products are linked if they have the same protein domain And these data are collected from domain databases such as Interpro, Smart, and PFAM. Now on to co-localization. And genes expressed in the same tissue or proteins found in the same location. Two genes are linked if they are both expressed in the same tissue or if their gene products are identified in the same cellular location. So the pathway... Um, I don't see that up there. It's in the worksheet. It's explained in the worksheet, but I just decided to go on to predicted since um, it doesn't come up in that tab. So predicted functional relationships between genes are often protein interactions. A major source of predicted data is mapping known functional relationships from another organism via orthology. So for instance, two proteins are predicted to interact if their orthologs are known to interact in another organism. So taking a screenshot for the predicted section. Well, now onto the other network graphic. So these are networks that do not fit into any of the above categories. So examples include phenotype correlations from ensemble, disease information from OMIM, and chemical genomics data. And again, you want to make sure that you're copying the function information, clicking on whatever genes um, are, appear in that map, writing down what those genes are and their functions. So, and then going back through and reading those genes and their different functions and making assumptions about um, connecting the dots between what shows up a lot. So if you constantly see cellular adhesion, filamentous growth, and endosome to vacuole sorting, um, that could be a key indicator that your gene of unknown function might be involved in that. And you would want to comment on that um, down below in this section where it asks you, um, is there a pattern to the types of genes or path pathways that your genes of interest consistently interact with? So, you know, if EMP70 was one that was always coming up and its information was um, um, always coming up with filamentous growth constantly being a main factor in other genes, you would want to comment on something like that. So now we're going to go back to the SGD and we're going to search for our gene name. We're going to go to the Interactions tab and take a screenshot of the interactions network. So we want both the physical and the genetic. I'm sorry I got cut off, but that's what it looks like for physical for mine. And then for genetic um, is when we have an interaction net network map for TMN2. So I'm just going to copy and paste that network graphic in there. And you can click on those um, genes in the network graphic and it'll take you to their corresponding SGD page. So is there a pattern to the types of genes or pathways that your gene of interest consistently interacts with? If so, what are they? So if um, PET20 showed up multiple times, you would want to say um, that one showed up in um, both the interaction network and in this different network, both Gene Mania and the SGD. Or again, if there was, um, if all of these genes talked about adhesion filaments and vacuolar to endosome functions, you would want to comment on that. So, and then what do you think these data combined can mean for the function of your protein? Again, if there is consistently um, something coming up, even as vague as it seems like it, um, everything is involved in the cell cycle, so maybe my gene has something to do with the cell cycle, it doesn't have to be super specific. So now moving on to spell. So we will open up that link and enter the gene name, so TMN2, and press search. 
So this is what it looks like. So we have a published data set up at the top. This data is made up of microarrays that can be used to measure increases, decreases, and no change results of expression of a given gene. So the green is a decrease in expression, the red is an increase in the, in the expression, and the black shows that there is nothing changing. So you can click on the different boxes and your gene will appear in the top corner and then you have all of these different genes that have similar patterns um, in terms of interactions and what they are exposed to. So you're going to want to screenshot that and make sure that you have these um, like the numbers 3, 4, 5 included in that because that tells you what stimuli they're being exposed to to show how they're interacting. And then I'll place the microarray data table in the worksheet. And so you can click on each of these different boxes and when you do the data set for um, the corresponding study that made it that red, green, or black color will come up. Um, the citation will be there and the description of what they did will be there. Um, and as you can see it shows um, how the gene reacted to different levels of ethanol for this specific example, but it shows basically the data set for that study that was done that results in whatever color that appears. Um, so at the top you have one, two, three, it's numbered and it tells you what different things it was exposed to. So one is genetic architecture of ethanol responsive um, transcription variation. So two, we have the repertoire and dynamics of evolutionary adaptions to control nutrient and then it's kind of cut, cut off there. Um, but you can click on the study and read about it as well, up at the top that it's hyperlinked. We have rapamycin exposure, that's that um, one bar of red amongst the black. So is there a pattern to the types of genes or pathways that your gene of interest constantly interacts with? So looking at those genes, um, so TMN2 consistently responds to ethanol, and then we have um, the rapamycin exposure, which would be another thing that I could comment on. And you would want to comment on as well um, what different genes are reacting in a similar way to um, these stimuli as your gene, um, looking them up in the SGD and seeing what their descriptions include. Um, looking more so into and googling maybe what is rapamycin exposure, what, is that connected to something that um, we have seen in terms of function coming up again and again. So what do you think these data combined could mean for the function of your protein? So commenting on um, how sensitive it is to what different things and again what genes are coming up again and again. So we also have go term enrichment data that is down here um, that we want to make note of. So I'm just going to screenshot that as the easiest way to uh, take down the data. And paste that in the worksheet. And then you're going to want to look at the information that go, comes up in the go term enrichment data and see if it corresponds to anything from the go terms from module 7 or from module 2 and 3. Some of you might have gotten go terms from uh, websites like Panther. So then is there a pattern to the types of genes or pathways that your gene of in interest consistently interacts with? If so, what are they? So what go terms have been coming up again and again? Um, what other genes are also in come up with those go terms that come up with everything else that we've looked at what comes up again and again in terms of function that really stands out to you not only in this worksheet but in the past worksheet um, and coming commenting on that and then what do you think these data combined could mean for the function of your protein so kind of making a hypothesis of what your protein could do and it could just be pretty general so thank you for watching this video. I hope that it was helpful. For more information, go to the yeastorphanproject.com. 
and this video was funded in part by the National Science Foundation. Thanks!